Welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 321. You need to know your song well before you start singing. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Do you know the best way to protect your vehicle, both the exterior and interior, is with a car cover? I've been using Covercraft car covers since 1975. It's a fast, easy, and inexpensive way to keep your vehicle looking new. 2015 marks Covercraft's 50th anniversary. They've manufactured premium quality exterior and interior covers here in the United States with a reputation for durability and design. They're the world's largest manufacturer of custom patterned vehicle covers that are crafted to fit with over 80,000 patterns and growing. You can choose from dozens of fabric options and accessories, all designed and carefully sewn for your special vehicle. Made in the USA, Covercraft is the right choice. I've protected my special rides with their covers for over 40 years, and you should too. Learn more today at Covercraft.com. Hello, automotive enthusiasts. I am revved up and so excited to introduce today's very special guest, Justin Lapriori. Justin, are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? I sure am, Mark. I don't know if I trust your driving yet, but uh, <laughs> I'll give it a whirl. I will try not to go off the road today. We'll keep the shiny side up, as they say. Justin Lapriori runs Let's Make Media, a modern digital video production company showcasing the art of craft through short films. Let's Make Media forges short documentary style films with an easily recognizable style capturing automobiles, music, food, and drink, as well as the artists, craftsmen, and women who create and maintain these arts. But it's the automobile that's closest to Justin's heart, and his fascination undoubtedly started as a toddler with post-bath hair drying rides, oh yeah, in his father's 289 Shelby Cobra. What a lucky little kid. Justin, I have told our listeners just a little bit about you. Would you take a moment and share some more about your career, your interests, and, of course, your passion for automobiles? Sure, Mark. First, thank you very much for having me on. I appreciate the time. You're welcome. Yeah, I grew up in a home with a – well, I came, from, came home from the hospital – in a 289 Shelby Cobra. Oh my gosh. You're like, <laughs> you're like the first super cool come from the hospital story on cars. Yeah. I know. I know. Well, it's also, that's what I blame my lead foot and my, uh, my constant fascination with cars on. I don't think that I had any way around it at that point. <laughs> um, awesome. Awesome. And that was in, that was in Maine. I grew up in Maine and grew up in a family that was a car family. My dad, very much grew up in the car culture of the 60s and carried that through to the 70s when I showed up. And we just had a rotating kind of cast of cars in our driveway. Wow. It seemed like, you know, every other week I would walk out there and there was a different car that he had traded up for or traded to the side or, you know, sometimes they would disappear in uh, kind of mysterious ways in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> I never asked too many questions about those. Wow. Well, that is really cool. But you went on to create a life around film and creating films, documentaries. Tell us a little bit how you got into that. Sure. You know, it all started with um, with photography. Again, my it, it really all goes back to my dad. He was a photographer, um, never never as a profession, just as a hobby. He would always give us cameras. You know, I had two siblings and we always had cameras with us i think i probably carried mine most you know more than any of my other siblings mm -hmm. um, and that was from a time when i was tall enough so that i could carry a camera around my neck and not have it drag on the ground <laughs> and it just kind of grew from that it grew out of a joy of of shooting pictures and and the actual kind of the tactile feel of film and waiting for those pictures to come back and waiting to see what they were going to look like and then remembering those moments. That just continued on and through video. We got our first video camera when I was about, I, I must have been nine or ten. You know, it was the mid-80s. 
And I used to just torture my family by making movies of them during the day. <laughs> I had nothing else to do in the summer, so I would keep my camera with me and make these short movies and actually just edit them in the camera as I went along. Oh, wow. Was and those then, the little Super 8s? No, this was actually, I, I, it must have been VHS at the time. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think it was just at the beginning of those. You know, the camera was about half the size that I was. Yeah. <laughs> Probably looked pretty funny. But I used, to, yeah, I used to hide in the closets and jump out at people and make these little movies. And then at the end of the day, I would have a show after dinner. Yeah, show them the movie that I had made during the day. And that's really, that was my first experience with actually building something and then having a little showing of it. Well, tell me a little bit about what you're doing now with Let's Make Media. And we're going to have a lot of questions as we go through the show here. But just let our audience know a little bit about Let's Make Media, because I know you do a lot of different short documentary style films, but you also like to play with cars in these films, too. So I do. You know, the, the cars are my favorite projects by far. And my work is really all over the place. I do a lot of different types of things. But the cars are, are as you said, the closest to my heart. Um, and those are the projects that I really look forward to. I shoot a lot for the, I shoot every year for the Amelia Island concourse and make their official film. Very Which cool. is always, always a joy. Yeah. Uh, I was going to those long before they invited me to make films for them. So now that's just, it's kind of a double bonus every March. I always look forward to that weekend. Oh yeah. Bill Warner's been a guest here on the show, so. Bill is a great guy. He's a he's a huge advocate of mine, and he's been a great help yeah. in, in my career. Awesome. As we move on to your journey here, and we're going to learn more about some of these projects you're doing and, and what you do for your career, but I always like to start by asking my guests for a success quote. And this is one of those sayings that's instrumental in your life, helps you kind of form your success. It's a great way to get the inspirational tires turning but in your case i'll say the camera wheels moving in those old days sure. of those reels but so justin take the wheel well it's this is a tough one this was a hard one for me because i feel like i collect these quotes as i go through my days and some of them stick with me and then others just kind of come in and then leave just as easily so i would say i have one of each i have a quote and then i have kind of a mantra that just always sticks cool. with me cool okay the quote has got to be a Dylan quote because, mm. you know, he's he's the best philosopher of our time. And he said, you need to know your song well before you start singing. I really identify that with that, especially because I came into this career later than most people do. Mm -hmm. You know, this seems like every kid these days has a camera and every kid has a million YouTube followers, which always makes me jealous. I don't know how they do that. I know. Darn kids. But I feel like, you know, I took my time and, and learned the craft and, and honed it a little bit before I actually started producing these pieces. And I think that that's gone a long way. Absolutely. You know, I had a guest on uh, just a few days ago that his father had taught him, before you start a project, have the right tools in hand. It's so, the same thing. Same I, thing. I feel like that's a very similar similar way to live. Yeah. And you said there was a second one. Yeah, the mantra is... is uh, you know, it never hurts to ask. Yes. That goes a long way, especially with these car shows like the Amelia Island Concourse. Yes. You know, you see somebody with a car and you say, hey, do you mind if I sit in your car for just a second? I've, I've always seen these cars, but mm -hmm. never gotten to sit in one. And th the worst the worst that somebody's going to say is no. Um, just don't go sit in one without permission. <laughs> no, never. And never on one. <laughs> oh, no, no. I saw a lady walk up to a car at Pebble Beach once and actually step into a Rolls Royce Silver Ghost to get her picture taken by her husband. I thought the owner was going to have a heart attack. <laughs> sure, I, I would have. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, it's uh, asking permission is so, so important. So many people go through life afraid to ask questions, to ask things of other people because they're afraid of how it will make them look. But what I've learned is people, are, for the most part, would love to offer you their advice and their knowledge. And, I agree. Uh, you can learn so much from and, it. And people love to share their cars yes. more than anything. Yes. You know, here's a great tip, and I, some of my, my listeners have heard this before. If you have a child and you take that child to car shows, which you should, this is how you teach them a wonderful life gift is push them forward and say, go up to the man or the woman and ask them about their car. And it will help them become a better communicator. They will be 
there will be an instant bond between them and that car owner, and they might be able to get and sit in that car too. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, my son has sat in many cars on many yeah, lawns. Kids have it so easy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But those are great mantras, great ideas. I think it's fantastic. Would you share a story with me that instigated your passion for cars? I'd love to hear about that pivotal moment in your life when you knew you were a car guy. And if you say on the way home from the hospital, I'm not so sure I'm going to believe you, but go for it. <laughs> I think it was probably on the way home from the yeah, hospital. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's, it was actually probably in the parking lot when that thing fired up. Oh, gosh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, it, I, I don't have a pivotal moment per se. I just feel like it's in my blood. Mm -hmm. uh, my grandfather was a machinist at Fisher Body in Framingham, Massachusetts, mm. and then moved on to the assembly division. I believe that the two merged somewhere in the late 60s. Oh. Um, and he, so he was there and he was building cars like the the Chevelle, the Chevrolet Chevelle, yeah. the Pontiac Le Mans, uh, the GTO were built there. So he he kind of had his hands on some some of the cooler cooler cars of the time. Oh yeah. And he always had a he had a rotating driveway as well. <laughs> uh, when I was when I was younger. And so there was there was that side of it, you know, there's when your grandfather's doing it and he's hands on and and you know everything is car based and mm -hmm. you know he even he he built us a go-kart in the late 70s and machined every piece of it himself. Wow. At work and then brought it home and built it. And I still have it. It's in my garage. Oh, cool. It is an absolute death trap. <laughs> it's a plywood bodied go kart uh -huh. with a Tecumseh lawnmower engine on it. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> which is great when you're, uh, eight years old and you weigh, you know, 70 pounds. Sure. Yeah. It's not, not so good when you're 40 and you're pushing somewhere over 200, you know. It's... Well, I think, yeah, I know you have a young daughter, so maybe you need to throw her in that thing and let her oh, go. Oh, she's been in it. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So, so there was that, you know, there's that with, with my grandfather. And then, uh, you know, my dad was right there too. He, he actually worked at the assembly plant as well when he was first out of high school. He, you know, he had the Cobra when I was born. He was a repo man. Hmm. At the time when I was oh, born. Okay. So yeah, talk about, uh, that's why we had the rotating cast of cars. But you know, a car would come in and, and he'd say, well, I like this better than my Austin Healey. So, yeah. you know, you guys sell the Healey and I'll take this 911 for a little bit and then we'll see what else we get in. What fun. I think the, you know, the, the Cobra was probably the pent ultimate kind of car for him. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, well, I don't think it would ever get any better than that. No, no. Very special cars. Justin, what I'd love to do now is take a look at some of the roads you've driven down. You've picked a, a career that's challenging. The entrepreneurial lifestyle is challenging in and of itself, but I'd love for you to share a huge challenge or even better, a great failure that you've faced along the way in your career. But the most important part of this has to do with what did you learn from that? How did you overcome it? You know, Mark, I've, I've been pretty lucky as a as a filmmaker. I haven't had any huge failures yet. <laughs> and that's I don't yeah. know if you can hear that I can hear it, yeah. in the background. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I haven't really been doing this a super long time as a, as a professional. Mm -hmm. So I would say that, and I was thinking about this. The I don't know if you would even call it a failure, but my regret is waiting so long to actually follow what has fairly obvious to me as as my calling, mm -hmm. for lack of a better term for it. You know, I just wish that I had been doing this longer because I love it so much and I see that other people enjoy the work as well. Sure. Which is just as important to me. It's just as fun to make these things, but it's even better for me to know that people out there are watching it and enjoying it and passing it around and sharing it and and that they'll be around for good, hopefully, as long as the internet is around, which I don't think it's going to go away anytime soon. Sure. You know, I loved the fact that you ch you shared this because what this show is all about is people that have figured out that way like you have to wrap their passion for cars into what they do. And so many times I talk to people, they say the same thing. I wish I'd started this sooner. I just wish I'd started it sooner because I'd be so much further along. I would know so much more. So it's a huge lesson for you listeners out there. If you have a thought, an idea in your head, you think this is what you want to go do, don't wait. To quote Nike, just do it. 
even if you have to just do it on the side yeah. for a while, just get yourself moving forward. That's the most important thing is to get that momentum. Yeah, you know, there's that great metaphor about failing. When you fail and fall down, you typically fall forward. And when you get up, you're a little bit further ahead. So just get out there and try something. If you want to be a photographer, a filmmaker, an artist, a writer, whatever, to start creating things. And the, the Internet these days allows us to do this in a way it never has before. So like you said, those kids that shoot those videos and get a, a million views, it goes viral. You know what? You never know. You might be one of those you kids. You never know. You never know. Yeah. Let's shift gears here and go to the other end of the spectrum and have you share one of those career aha moments when the headlights come on and illuminate your way for that new idea, that new direction that you had, and tell us the steps you took to turn your aha moment into a success. The uh, the aha moment had to have been the first year that I was down shooting at Amelia Island. Mm -hmm. And I was actually there, not even, the, I mean, they didn't hire me. I was just there of my own volition with my with my dad you know and he he wanted to go and just shoot pictures and i said you know i i see so many people shooting pictures i'm going to shoot video this year and i'm going to really focus on trying to capture the event which was great it was good fun he was we wandered we spent the weekend together he shot a ton of pictures i shot video you know i i kind of i asked for some rides and some cars which was a first for me I ended up kind of begging my way into a uh, 1951 Ferrari 212 Export Barchetta. Ooh, nice. Which was pretty funny to see me in that car. I'm about 6'5", <laughs> and sitting in that car, I think my head was probably about, uh, it must have been at least two feet over the windshield. Yeah, I was going to say. Quite the, quite the scene. <laughs> so I made the, you know, we went down there, and we had this great time, had this great experience, chased all these Ferrari GTOs all over Amelia Island, which was unbelievable. Wow. And I got home and, and I sat and I actually looked at all the footage and I said, you know, this this could be something. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I've seen anybody make something like this at that point. And that was only four or five years ago. Yeah. So I, I kind of just started cutting it and putting it together like I would just for myself and really just to share with my family. I didn't really think it would go much farther than that. So I made this thing and sent it to a few people and they all they all said, Wow, this is this looks pretty good. Right. You know, this you polish this up a little bit and, and you could have something. Mm -hmm. And so I sent it to the people, you know, that had given me rides in the cars, sent it to Bill Warner, and Bill came back to me immediately and, and just he was he was amazed. Cool. You know, he said, This is great. We need to we need to use this. Yeah. You know, do you think that you could possibly ever do this again? <laughs> oh, no, I'm not I interested. Said, I, don't, I don't know. I think I could probably uh, swing yeah, that. I think so. I, think I could probably do that again. So that was really the first moment where I, I said, wow, this is something that people actually appreciate. And let's see what we can do with this. Let's see where this can go in the, in the car realm, at least. I had been making other videos for a little while, but, but I had never really thought about focusing on the car thing, even though that's kind of where my love lies. Wonderful. You know, and again, another lesson for you entrepreneurs, sidepreneurs, entrepreneurs to be that uh, just get out there and do it. Give it a try. Show it to your friends, family, and you never know where it may take you. Just make stuff. The more the more things you make, the better you get at it and the yeah. more people see it and the more practice you get and the better they the better they turn out. Yes, absolutely. How about proudest career moments? I would assume you've had many, but is there one in particular that stands out for you? Yeah, there, you know, that was, it all goes back to that first film. And, you know, it kind of, it, it got up on a couple of websites, which was kind of fun to see. And then I woke up one morning and I had just a million emails. <laughs> and I said, oh, here I, we go. I don't know where this is. This has gone somewhere. And so I had to kind of track it down on the internet uh -huh. and looked at my page. And I'm trying to figure out where it is. And it's, it's the lead thing on topgear.com. Which cool. for me, growing up, like Top Gear was Top Gear was it. Yeah. You know? Oh wow. And so that, you know, I opened up the, the web page and my jaw just dropped. And it was <laughs> you know, instant goosebumps and oh, yeah. more emails pouring in from people and it was that was a lot of fun. That was I would say that I was fairly proud of the little thing that I didn't even know I was gonna do becoming this kind of I don't know. It was important it seemed important for a moment. Oh, absolutely. It's it's those 
pivotal moments, those triggers, those stepping off points that can make a huge difference. And again, the way the internet works today and how you can be exposed is just, uh, we're, the world is so open. It's really cool. Let's have a little bit of fun here. What was your first really special vehicle? And if you could share a memory with me that you had with that car. Sure, of course. Uh, first special car had to have just been my first car just because it was a car, you know, and I just <laughs> had wanted to just drive for so long, you know, growing up with that go-kart and, and driving that thing at nine years old by myself and, you know, going and driving the go-karts anytime we were near an amusement park or anything. I just really wanted to drive. Mm-hmm. So I was 16. And I had my first car, and my my dad actually bought it for me so that I could drive back and forth. He and my mother were long divorced and lived an hour apart. And so they would have to spend every Friday and Sunday kind of shuttling us back and forth. So as soon as I was old enough to drive, you know, I got a car, which was great. Yeah. It was a an Audi 5000 S wagon, which is a fun car. I thought it was a cool car. Yeah. You know, at the time, I think my friends were like, I don't know, man, this is, you're like, this is kind of like a soccer mom car. <laughs> well, the wagon factor, but the Audi part of it is kind of cool. It was a it was a cool car. It was a manual, which was oh even better. important to me. You know that's yeah. that's a that's a dying art right oh, there, yeah. and especially as a sixteen year old. Uh huh. And just you know really learning how to drive properly in that car. Mm-hmm. And this was in New England, so I was doing a lot of driving in the snow, which is a whole other learning curve <laughs> and experience. <laughs> yes. But it was fun, you know. Luckily, I had a good driving teacher who would just take me out in the in the snow and just, you know, he'd say, "Okay, go as fast as you can." Yeah. Say, okay, so you can see what happens. Sure. You know, I then, think it's great to teach kids how to drive a manual. There's a couple great things about it. It's really hard to text and drive if you're driving a manual car. <laughs> sure is. <laughs> you know, and the other part of it is uh, a lot of thieves can't drive manual, so maybe your car won't be stolen. They'll pick the next one in line. Doesn't stop them from trying, though. Well, I know, I know, but well, very <laughs> they don't get far. No, nah, that's true. Yeah, first gear, and they either blow up the engine, or they can't figure out why the car won't go any faster. So, very cool. How about seller's remorse? Is there something you've let go that you really wish you had back in your garage? You know, I, I I was thinking about this, and I haven't had too many cars. I don't have buyer's remorse. What I have is more questionable ownership of one car. Okay, well that leads me. Okay, there's an optional question here, and sure. that one is. Uh, is there a vehicle that you bought that shortly after you said, what was I thinking? Kind of. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can okay. I say kind of. Kind of, sure. Yeah. So I was, I was gifted a car by my grandfather. Uh-huh. It was uh, a 1991 Cadillac Eldorado Biarritz. Oh. Oh, yes. Goodness. <laughs> Maroon had the gold package. Oh, gosh. And it, was, it was set up for elderly comfort. Of it course. Was velour. Yeah. As far as the eye could see. And yeah. so, but he was nice enough to offer it to me for very little money. Of course. Yeah. So I took it. Yeah. And I had no idea what I was getting myself into. <laughs> I did not like that car for a single moment. It kind of was just, you know, the people say it drives like a boat, but that thing just really drove like a boat. Cadillac has really changed. You know, the cars nowadays, if Grandpa had given you a car today that was a Cadillac, you'd be pretty darn happy. I would, I would certainly take it. And looking back, I probably would have enjoyed that car a little bit more had I known a little bit more about it. But mm-hmm. the problem was is that the CPU failed in it. Oh, okay. And that was one of the first ones that had that unit. And it was really frustrating for me to not have something mechanical go wrong in the car, but rather have something that was uh, digital or yeah. you know, it was kind of this nebulous thing that i couldn't really put my hands on nothing to fix you just have to replace yeah exactly so and then you know and that controlled the doors and the windows and i couldn't get anything <laughs> to open or close i had to climb in through the window that oh I my couldn't gosh roll up because it was just too much money to replace the cpu unit, unit. oh yeah so yeah so i sold that and and went back to my roots and and i think i got a 1978 volari station wagon after <laughs> that you know was, i've always been drawn to the wagons i think after the first audi yeah so uh, something a little more mechanical. So that that was kind of the first one where I just thought, what am I doing in this car? This is this is the wrong car for wrong, me. Cars are yeah. too cars are too important to me for me just to be driving this. Yeah, important to know. How about current projects? Is there something you're working on today that really has you excited and fired up? Yeah, you know, well, I just finished up this year's Amelia Island video, and and uh, you know, as we record this, it's been I think just right around three months mm-hmm. since since that event, which is a long time afterwards to be working on something. But, but I, I did, I put extra work into it this year. Uh, I shot it in a different, on a different format. 
and tried really hard to record the sound properly, mm-hmm. separate. Um, so it it just it took a long time to to kind of work out and get together, and it ended up being a 23 minute short film, which is which is that's there's a lot of cars and a lot of edits and oh gosh, there's yeah. a lot going on in there. So that's that's exciting. I'm you know just to put that out into the world and to start see start start to see where it goes and and how people respond to it is great. Where can people go to to watch that? Sure, people can go to. I have a standalone website for it. It's freshpatinafilm.com. Cool. Okay. Um, and I'm sure it'll be up on the Amelia Island yeah. website as well before uh-huh. you know it. Yeah. Oh, that, very cool. Yeah. So the, there's that, and uh, I'm working with a private collector to document his collection of cars. He's got somewhere in the realm of 70 cars. Oh goodness! Wow. And this is a fun project because he wants to interview survivors and people that have had history with the cars Mm -hmm. and actually go and interview them and and get this stuff kind of committed to hard drives before before it's too late nice yeah so we're trying to build these little vignettes on these cars which i think are it's pretty exciting because they will end up living with the cars and moving on with the cars when they get sold and move from you know collector to collector so that's wow that's kind of a fun thing, and it's something that I've been tossing around for a while. I just hadn't found the right person to, to do it. Well, hopefully this will open a door to many other collectors who have cars that want to do the same thing. So very exciting. That's really neat. I have never seen that done before. So Yeah, it's, it seems like it's just, you know, it's an important thing. Uh, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of these people that drove these cars in the 50s and 60s or even the 70s are, are no longer around. Very cool. How about this question? This is very introspective. If you were a car, what kind of car would Justin be and why? This was a tough one for me. (laughs) This was. (laughs) That's why I like to ask it. It's very, you know, I always tell people it's not what you want to be. It's who you are. I know, which was, this is a hard thing to even think about. Yeah, I know. Um, You know, I, I, I think it would probably be some, and this is hard to say as as somebody who's Italian, but it would have to be some piece of German engineering. Ooh, okay. Yeah, just something that wasn't too too flashy on the outside, you know, and very detail oriented, mm-hmm. you know, but somewhat of a sleeper car. Okay, um, so maybe like a 500e Mercedes or maybe an old. Yes, somewhere around there. I mean, I'll go I'll go old BMW. Maybe, you know, we'll we'll give myself a little credit. We'll maybe <laughs> maybe make it an E30. Ooh. Maybe an M3 somewhere along there, you know, something nice. that could, yeah. once you get to know it, it's, uh-huh. you know, it's, uh, there's a little bit more to it than, than you than first what you see. see. You see, okay, I see that. All right. Well, that's why you I like that? to ask Does that. Does that make yeah. sense? I think that works well. That's why I like to ask that question. That was a hard one. Yeah, it is for many people. You know, some people know right away, but others, they really have to chew on that a bit. So I hope nobody ever asked me that question. Um, <laughs> up next, Justin is the last lap. But before we put the pedal to the metal, let's say thank you to today's Cars yeah sponsor. Have you turned your key and heard that dreaded tick, 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 tick because of a dead battery? No worries. I've got the NOCO Genius Boost Jump Starter. This compact tool fits in your glove box and features rechargeable lithium battery technology that will start a dead battery in your car, boat, truck, or RV. It packs a whopping 12-volt, 400-amp starting power, and can start up to 20 dead batteries on a single charge. Plus, it has built-in spark-proof technology with reverse polarity protection to safely jumpstart your vehicle. The compact, ergonomically designed clamps are solid copper for maximum conductivity, and there's a built-in ultra-bright dual LED flashlight with seven modes, including an SOS emergency strobe. It's easily rechargeable with a USB outlet, and you can charge your smartphone or tablet while you're on the road. Works on any 12-volt lead-acid battery. The Genius Boost from NOCO is the ultimate emergency tool that's safe and easy to use. Quality design, state-of-the-art technology from NOCO, your battery care source since 1914. Get yours at GeniusChargers.com. Do you love vintage cars? Then go to CarsYeah.com and get a free copy of the fantastic Filler Up book. It's a full-color ebook filled with fuel filler fun with over 60 color photographs of vintage cars, plus inspirational quotes from some of the most famous automotive enthusiasts of all time. Simply go to CarsYad.com and click on the free book button on the home page. Download your free filler-up book today at Cars Yeah. Okay, Justin, we're back and we're entering the last lap, and this is where I'm going to fire off a series of questions and ask you to give our listeners 
some really quick blips of the throttle answers. So you ready? I'm ready. What's the best automotive advice you've ever received? You know, it's a little it's a little on the cornball side, but I got to say you just got to enjoy the drive. Yes, definitely. And that it's it's not always about where you're going, but how you get there. Yes, absolutely, especially when it comes to collector cars or any kind of fun car. Absolutely. Yeah, well, even everyday driving. Yeah. You know, just just enjoy where you are and what you're doing and and you know, just enjoy the fact that you're moving forward at a high rate of speed or whatever rate of speed you choose to go. Yes, my wife always teases me because when I go through a corner, she goes, what are you doing? I go, I'm finding the right apex. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> driving. Yeah. <laughs> I only know one way to drive. She'll stay at the center of the road, okay? <laughs> oh, no, no. Yeah. That, that white line and all that pavement off to the side is there for a reason. Yeah, I don't want to get into the marbles. <laughs> Would you share one of your personal habits that you believe has contributed to your success over the years? Well, personal habit. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a bad habit, but I would say being overly aware and critical of visual design. Kind of a mouthful. No, you know, I understand because my father is an architect and he taught us growing up. Every time we'd go somewhere, he would point things out all the time. And for a long time, I used to go, God, I wish he wouldn't have done that. Now I can't go into a room without being visually aware, (laughs) you know? Same boat. Yeah, Yeah. you're in the same boat. So I try and translate that that into, into my filmmaking. Yeah, it's important. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and there's and I don't know who has time for bad design. It's so easy to design things oh, well. Oh, yes. It's very frustrating uh, for especially me. Especially when it comes to cars. Yes, <laughs> especially. Definitely. Do you have a resource you think the Cars Yeah listeners would really enjoy? Yeah, I do. I, and I don't know that I don't know that it's anything innovative or or new or or anything that nobody, you know, that's some hidden gem, but you know, I spend a lot of time on the internet. I try and give myself an hour a morning just to see what's going on and watch some videos. And I always end up, you know, I end up on websites like Jalopnik or, you know, there's Motorsport Retro out of Australia, mm-hmm. that, you know, Rich. And I, has Rich been on the show? Yes, he has. Rich he Dollar? Has. Yes. Yes, he has. Uh huh. That's a great source. Yes. Uh, and Matt Hardigree from Jalopnik. He's oh, been sure. on the show too. Yeah. Yep. Jalopnik is great. You know, th- those guys really. They've done a lot for me. They they post anything I send them, which is is great. I don't know that a lot of people can say that. The Chicane blog is another one that I end up on. There's a gentleman there. I believe his name is Harlow. And then you know I I, I still enjoy still photography and people that do it well. I'm a huge fan of guys like Tim Scott over in I believe he's London based um, and other filmmakers around. You know Fraser Spo, uh, Spowert, I believe is how you say his last name. He's over at E Garage now. He makes some really cool stuff. Uh, Tamir, who, Tamir, who made the, I think he made the original Urban Outlaw video with, mm-hmm. uh, with Magnus Walker, with who Magnus was Walker. my, he was my hundredth guest. Yep. So there, there are just lots of people out there, you know, making amazing things. Yes. Fantastic. How about a book? Is there one book in particular you think our listeners would really enjoy reading? There's one on my desk right now. It's a Clementaski. Oh, uh, the <laughs> memoirs of, of Clementaski. I he have that book himself. Yes. And that is there's and that's a little bit of a read, but um, yeah, it's sprinkled with uh, enough photos so that you don't get uh, too overwhelmed <laughs> with all the words. But yeah, he was he's he's amazing. He was the first guy to really capture the motion and the emotion of of those early racers and early cars. Oh yeah, I've got five of his photographs in my home, and they're just I love walking down the hall and just looking at them. They're just wonderful. Yeah, he's yeah, it's just amazing stuff. Yeah, great things. Well, listeners, you can find links to these great resources at carsyad.com slash Justin Lapierre. And his last name is spelled L-A-P-R-I-O-R-E. little Italian sprinkled in there, I believe. There you go. <laughs> si, si, si. <laughs> but there you go. All right, we're up to the checkered flag now, Justin. And this last question can be a real doozy. If you could only have one collector car in your garage, but don't worry about the cost because today I'm buying what would that one vehicle be and why? I hope you brought your big wallet. Oh, am I going to need one of those golfer's checks, the big you long ones? With all this? Okay. Are. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take a 1962 Ferrari 250 GTO. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> oh, I've got gonna, one. I think I believe you're going to need the biggest check, right? Uh, that, the, uh, the, yeah, the biggest check. Well, you know, I've had several guests choose that particular vehicle. Tell me what it is about the GTO that just pulls on your heart. You no, know, there is a reason that so many people are drawn to that car. Yeah. I was lucky enough to get a little ride this past year at Amelia in the uh, in the Sterling Moss uh, UD, UDT Laystall Apple Green version. You're kidding. 
Oh my I gosh. I'm not kidding. Oh man. And I, you know, I thought that I was really ready for it. I thought that I had prepared myself. And the hardest part was is that I, I was supposed to be shooting. You know, I was supposed to be shooting video the whole time. <laughs> you forgot to turn the camera on? No, camera was on. I <laughs> okay. made sure of that. I just, you know, I thought that I was ready to do both at once. Yeah. And let me tell you, that car, when it took off, it made a sound mm-hmm. unlike anything else that I will probably ever experience ever again. Yeah. And just the feeling of it and the bare bones feeling of it you know there's very little on the inside of that car that that's not there for you know for a reason sure it was just a kind of a an amazing experience yeah just the noise of it i think that's worth all of the cost right there and then of course as soon as the noise died down you could hear my string of expletives (laughs) coming out of my mouth just because i couldn't believe what i just experienced holy moly yeah yeah, a lot of holy moly's yeah oh my gosh you know Way back when, I believe that car was part of the Matsuda collection in Japan. I believe and it was. You're right. I, the first time I went to Japan, odd little trivia bit here, I was actually made in Japan. Yeah, I've got it stamped right here on my wow. rear end somewhere. Nice. But nice. Yeah, but I got to go to Japan for the first time with a friend of mine, Kenji Yoshino, who's been on this show. He sells Citron parts. Don't ask me why a gentleman from Japan is selling French car parts. But we got to go visit the Matsuda collection, and that car was sitting in there. I got to sit in it. And the color of that car, because most of them are, of course, red, there's some silver sprinkled in, and uh, just an absolutely stunning car. And the fact you got to actually move in it, because it was in a museum when I saw it. It wasn't going anywhere, just sitting there. Ah, what a spectacular experience. Wow, very fortunate. To it get was to amazing. It was amazing. <laughs> I do, and I, I made a little short film, just a little minute and a half blip of just that one little ride. Of course. That's, uh, that's up on my website. That's, that's really fun. It's Fan- a great noise. Fantastico. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Justin, you've taken me on a great ride today, especially in that GTO, and I've really enjoyed your stories. And I want to thank you for sharing your journey with the Cars Yeah listeners and with me. Could you give us one parting piece of guidance before you drive off into the sunset in that Ferrari GTO? Oh, man, I don't know if I can wait to get in it to drive away. (laughs) (laughs) It's Um, going to take me a while to peel it away from the owner. So (laughs) I'm going to say, you know, if you have kids, take them to car shows. Yes. Get them out there. And like you said earlier, you know, Push them, push them up to the front of the crowd, you know, push them towards the cars and, and show them it's a great way to learn about history, craftsmanship, you know, art and just earplugs. It's a great way to learn about earplugs yep. as a kid. Um, and just the importance of, of the car and yeah. what it's meant to the history of not only this country, but uh, all over the world. It's great advice, and it is such a powerful way to teach your children how to communicate as well and meet people that could make impressions and be, and make friendships for the rest of their lives. So wonderful advice. What's the best way for our listeners to learn more about you and your business? Sure. You can find me uh, online at letsmakemedia.com. Awesome. Um, you can find me on Vimeo as Let's Make Media, and that's where you'll find kind of smaller, more personal projects that I've made that, that don't necessarily make their way to my big old website. Uh, and you can find me on Facebook at as Let's Make Media, or find me as Justin Lapriori, and that's fine. You know, awesome. Shoot me a note. Great. Listeners, again, you can find links to everything Justin has shared with us today at the Cars yeah website, carsyeah.com. Just put Justin... In the search bar, his show notes page will pop up with links to everything we've shared today. Justin, thank you for being so generous with your time and expertise and for sharing your experiences with the listeners today. It's been really fun. Until we talk again, I'll see you down the road. Thank you, Mark. I, I appreciate the time, and uh, I've, had a, I've had a good time, and you're a much better driver than I had expected. Well, thank goodness I passed the test. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah.